In this video, we're gonna look at buying call options at different strikes, the kind of different payoffs with paying different prices for options at different strike points. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. Okay, so when we're buying a call option, we kind of have the decision to make of what strike price we're going to buy at. So forget about expiry for now, that's a completely separate decision. We have to combine that with this, but let's look at this, isolate this decision-making process here now. So we are bullish on XYZ stock, right? This is XYZ stock and we think it's gonna go higher. It's currently trading at $100. We look at the, we decide on expiry date. Like I say, that's a decision making process in itself. But let's say we've settled on that. And now we're looking at the call option prices and we're trying to decide which one to buy. So we've got three examples here. And imagine we could probably spread this out even further, but we'll use these for now. So we look at the price of these call options and XYZ is currently trading 100 bucks. Uh, the $98 call option is $6. The $100 call option is $4. And the $103 call option is $2. Right, now one of these is in the money, which is the 98 call option. One of them is at the money and one of them is out of the money, the 103. Now, we've got intrinsic and extrinsic value to the option. I've done a video on that. Go and check it out if you want to kind of have a little re recap on that. But basically speaking, intrinsic is the amount of profit that's in the deal already. So you can see that if we bought a $98 call option, we've already got $2 worth of intrinsic value in there because if it expired now we've got the right but not the obligation to buy those shares at 98 bucks it's currently trading 100 the value of that option is two dollars right so that's the intrinsic value of it have we got any intrinsic value in the others no we haven't because there's no value to this call option 100 it's going to expire worthless if the if the stock prior price is a hundred dollars at expiry and this one here have we got any intrinsic value no we haven't we definitely haven't because we've got the right to buy that stock at 103 it's currently trading 100 there's no point in that whatsoever so this is the only one with intrinsic value okay so how's the rest of the price made up we can see that the hundred dollar call option is priced at four dollars in other words that's the extrinsic value of that option that is the time to includes the time to expiry and includes the implied volatility so those two components are the main components that make up the price of this stock a call option price and we can make a judgment from that whether we want to take this deal. And if we look here, if we just kind of summarize the others as well, the 98 call option has that $2 intrinsic plus that $4 extrinsic, giving us $6. And then we look at this one here. This is where it gets interesting, right? The 103 call option only has $2 worth of extrinsic value because, because the strike price now is way further away than the strike price here, we've got an extra $3 on that. So that price starts to go lower and lower and lower and lower and lower. So you can see now how we could go really far out. We could take this to 150 and that might be at 10 cents. Just an example, okay? So 150 call option equals, uh, you know, that could be could be 10 cents. You know, whether it will or not, I don't know, but that's the sort of thing we could be. Uh, and you can see how that starts to, kind of make your decision you start to think okay um if i really nail it i'm really really bullish and i do think it's going to go to 150 i might have a crack at those tens now the chances of it going there are low based on the pricing because the extrinsic value is a mere 10 cents right nobody who's selling that thinks it's going to go to 150 in the time frame that you are specifying however 103 seems a bit more feasible. So uh, people who are selling those call options want $2 for those options. So you might now be thinking, okay, um, that might be too far away. That's a bit too much of a lottery punt for me. 103 might be a bit better. Do I want to do the one? No, I'm going to go for the 103. So the payoff you've got is this, and the decision you've got to make is this. If this, if this expires anywhere less than 105, you are going to lose all your money in the buying the option, right? Because it's 103 plus the price of the option. It's got to be 105 because that's the value of the call option. We'll have $2 worth of value if it hits 105 because 103 call option gives the right to buy at 103, etc. So, but if you now start thinking, okay, well, if this thing goes to 110, what is this worth? This is worth seven bucks but I only paid two for it, so I'm making $5. I'm making an awful lot of percentage return on my $2 investment. That's pretty significant.
And so you start thinking, all right, but what if I don't think it's quite gonna get there? Because of course, if it doesn't get to 105, I've lost all my money. And you might go, okay, well, maybe I'll take the 100 call option because actually, if that gets to 105, I'm still gonna make some money because even though I've paid $4 for it, I'm gonna, it's gonna be worth what? It's gonna be worth $5. So I'm gonna get $1 worth of profit. So I'm gonna make some money out of it. So it starts to bring, even though it's more expensive, it brings the break even down a little bit um, and the percentage returns are adjusted to suit. Now, if we looked at this example here and let's say 150, now imagine if this thing went up to 160, this has got $10 worth of value in it. $10 worth of value, we only paid 10 cents for the thing. Now that's a jackpot trade, right? Because all of a sudden we've made a massive amount. We've made $9.90 on the value of that call option, huge. But of course, the chance of it doing that are much, much slimmer than this. So the theory is guys, is that we have to decide where we think the price is gonna go and where realistically it's gonna go within the time frame. We'd all love to be buying really out of the money call options and the thing just surprising everybody and shooting up to the stratosphere. That would be great, but we've got to measure our expectations and say, okay, we might have to pay a bit more. And also, you know, look at the difference. That's double that price. It's a lot of difference. If you think about a stock price, it's double. You've got double the risk, basically, or you've got to do half the position size for the same risk. So there's quite a big decision to make there. Um, so you've got to decide where you think the stock price is going to go, uh, how quickly it's going to get there. Are you uber, uber bullish? If you are, maybe you take a little go on that. Maybe you spread your risk across a few of them. Um, you can start to see now how if you're speculating in options, why trying to, trying to estimate the strike price affects a lot on your profit and loss. But the higher or further away you go, you're going to have loser, 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 maybe get a big winner. The closer you go to strike price, you're probably going to have much more winners, but not so big. It's the trade-off you've got to make and the commercial decision you've got to make in your trading business. All right, guys, buying calls at different strikes. Simple example. Hope that's helped. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.